Developing a motor that produces thrust is one thing. Understanding the thrust generated is another. Today we're going to be making a setup that allows us to measure actual performance and compare it to theoretical design. This will be done using a load cell to measure the force generated and a pressure transducer to record the pressure within the rocket motor during firing. By measuring thrust and chamber pressure, we can assess motor and propellant performance and derive key parameters like total impulse, specific impulse, C star, and thrust coefficient from test data. The data acquisition or DAC portion is directly made from All Digital 33's plan on GitHub, linked in the description. So all credit goes to him here. I'm just following the instructions. Okay, I got our schematic. I'm gonna tape this thing up. That way. I always got it handy. If I did it again, I think this is the way to go. Just putting it on the board. Kind of new to me, so we're, we're learning as we go. Using hot glue here to hold the wires in place while I turn the board over and solder the backside. Got the code loaded up. All we got is a white screen. This is using the SPI connection, which means there's a point in the back we have to solder. So hopefully that fixes the issue. Otherwise, I'm really have to go digging to figure this out. Look at that, we're golden. Now that it's working, so we're gonna calibrate it. our sensors. For the load cell, get a known weight. 100. For the pressure transducer, get a known pressure. Then to see what Arduino reads at these levels. From there, you can get a calibration factor you can enter into the code. 100 PSI to the blowgun is going to be settling in at 125, 126, cool. So at 100 PSI, we're reading 26, or 126, but we got 100 base. Here I didn't realize one of the holes was offset on the Arduino Mega, so we only got three screws holding it down. Should be okay. The case is 3D printed in PLA, and if you haven't used these heat set inserts, I highly recommend. I forgot to include the Cat6 cable in the case design, so we're just yeah. taping it in for strain yeah. relief. Yeah. The shield was slightly longer than anticipated. Didn't really plan things out very well, so we're cutting the case to make it fit. Now it's time to install this guy in here. Cover up this rat nest of wires. It really is quite a rat nest. And I think we're gonna sort these rabbit. Mm -hmm. The stand is just a Harbor Freight special repurposed for rocket motors since uh, I already have a place for mine grinder. It's a bit of a hack job, but I think it'll do the trick. This bolt will secure the load cell later on. This bracing on the backside might be overkill, but I have the steel and who knows, might be an excuse to go larger in the future. Also, everything was welded up fully after. Covering up all the ugly welds with some paint. Hopefully it withstands the exhaust temperatures. My friend gave me this flaring kit back in 2019, so I'm glad I'm putting it to use. I just had to figure out how to use it, which you see me struggling a bit in this video. Once the MPT threads were sealed up with some blue monster tape, I added a longer line of copper tube to allow the hot gases from the motor to cool down and protect the sensor. Steel wool was also added to the bulkhead to act as sort of a filter. I got this idea, as long as most things related to motor construction, from Richard Naka's website, which is linked in the description. So this is after the first test. As you can see, the motor burnt. It's just held into place with these bolts. Um, those plastic things are covers, because I noticed that the bolts themselves like this would bite into the casing and kind of hold it and maybe reduce the amount of thrust measured. So coming down here, we got our load cell, a little block that it can rest on. And then that copper tube is this eighth inch MPT that's threaded into the bulkhead. And that goes to our pressure transducer. And then that was pressure transducer and the load cell will go to this Cat6 cable so you can have a safe distance from the DAC right here. The, the igniter, which is currently just taped over to the side, it has a pretty good range with this, so you can be farther away if needed. I think this is polycarbonate, I believe. It was in the scrap section at Tap Plastics. I'm gonna make a more permanent mount for it and maybe surround the whole thing, just in case you get some ejection from the motor. Uh, 
it'll be contained more in the vertical direction. So this is the deck. It says, okay, all good, and you got a couple options. You got your review mode for the tests you've done, your sample mode, so if you wanna fire the motor, it's gonna say, okay, press, I switched these, so when it says select to start, really, you should press scroll. So once it detects load or pressure, it'll start sampling, and then it will do a little bit of post sampling, then it'll complete and give you your motor data. Then once you do that, you can review it. I had made a few PVC rockets back in 2015, but this was my first one using metal and actually starting to plan things out in advance. So I chose an underpowered motor to be on the safe side. However, it turned out that this motor was only about half as powerful as we'd predicted. But hey, I'm just glad everything worked out in the end. Lower than expected impulse was likely caused by the grain size of the potassium nitrate being too large. Another factor was a slower than desired start with the igniter, which caused unnecessary fuel to burn during the ramp up to operating pressure. Additionally, the motor was left in the human environment for several days prior to the test. I'll be addressing these issues and discussing the motor build in more detail in another video. Overall, I think the test was a good benchmark to make changes and improvements. So if you have any ideas, please let me know.